Hey everybody, it is March and I've got a fantastic idea for a new clicky fidget. So let's get cracking. We're gonna start with a template. Of course, you can find this in the description or just type bit.ly hl 4 leaf This is a Tinkercad Clover clicky fidget template. Of course, it is set to copy and tinker. So don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give it a reaction before you copy and tinker. Now I have made a few of these clicky fidgets. These are the holes that we cut out to make them work. Now before we get started, friends, the parts that make these work are the awesome holes. I'd like you to click on them and I'm going to show you how to save them. Simply click on your creations and click create shape. This is going to be called the key hole. You do need to wait a moment for it to load. Mine was pretty efficient today. You could tag it. You should lock the part size because this stays the same. And we're going to simply save the shape. After a moment, it'll appear right here. You can see I have already done that once. If you end up with duplicates, you can simply click that button and choose delete. I'm going to do the same thing quickly for this. Once again, it was create shape. Wait for it to load. This one is called key cap. Still needs to be a hole. Lock the part size and save the shape. Of course, since I've already got them, I'm just going to hit cancel. So let me explain this part super quick. To get this clover, I simply found one that had a large middle because we're going to cut out that key. And then I did a screen capture and of course went to pick SVG. This is my favorite way for turning images into an SVG. Here is my black and white four leaf clover. If we open that, you can see it traces it. I do not like these little lines, so I'm going to switch to internal two. That usually gives me the solid one I want to work with. I like usually when this is filled in, but I'm going to show you today. It's not essential. Download the SVG. I'm going to just keep the wacky name. And then I can return to Tinkercad and I can import it. Of course, this is already in your project, so you don't have to do this. I just want you to see the steps. The next thing is I like to make these about 45 or 50 millimeters across. So I'm going to type 45 for that measurement. This measurement snaps, and I'm going to choose Import. This is the shape, as you can see, I've already given you. Friends, this is why we do this. Once you import an SVG, you get these modes. Now today we need the silhouette mode, and this is where the project gets magical. We're going to take this and do control D. We're going to take the second one and we're going to make it outer line, set the number to one and press enter. We want it to be round and we're going to bump up the quality. What this does is it gives us a thicker version of the same shape. We're now going to export that as an SVG. This is real cool for making lids and boxes, all sorts of things. I'm going to just leave that name and then I'm going to re-import it. There's my copy. This time I set art and I keep the measurements. You'll notice that it comes in at the exact same size as the walls that we just made. Of course, it does take a moment to import it. I'm going to set this to a different color. Let's go with something funky in red. And if we bring this out, you can see it lines up exactly with that one we just made. I can also, even better, do L for a line and just choose middle, middle, so it's all grouped. Now we're going to use this red one to make the walls by once again doing outer line, bump up that quality, make it round, and then I'm going to choose 1.2 for my wall thickness. And then we just need to wait for it to snap. Now this is going to be the outside of our project, and since it's a shamrock, let's switch to an awesome green instead. Now we need to cut out the hole, and then we're going to make the cap. So these need to be 12 millimeters high. You can see I already had set it as that. Make sure that yours is as well. We're going to take this one and do control D, so this is the center one, and it's also going to be the lid. If you look down in, notice there is a gap all the way around this, and that's what makes it work. We can now shift click on these two, choose L for a line, click on this one to make it the master, and choose center, center, and top. 
Now, because of the four-leaf clover having this part, center is not really where we want. So we're going to move that with the arrow keys to where we think is middle. I think that's pretty close. You could adjust the nudge to get it exactly right. I have found that it doesn't have to be perfect. I do want to make sure it cuts all the way out. So now I'm going to switch my nudge to point 0.1, and I'm going to do control up to raise that up. I'm going to take this height, and let's make sure it's the right number. If we've got 12 here, I have found that 17 is a good number for the walls of our project. Next up, we need to line these up. So once again, shift select, L for align. This one's the boss, and we want it to come to the middle. Now I find this easier to see if I look at it from this corner because then these all line up. So right there you can tell we are at the middle, but I just put this underneath this project. So I'm going to hit T for transparent so you can see where it was. Now we're going to grab these two, do L for align, and we want to line it up this way. We have already got it lined up over here. Now if we hide this, I'm going to let you know this is upside down. I'm going to flip it. I do this because quite often I print these upside down so they've got a smoother surface. And then I simply need to make this the correct height, which I'm going to use 4.25 and press enter. That will be underneath. It will cut and it'll sit on top of here just like that. Friends, just like that, you have built your clicky fidget. Let's make this a green. I'll go back to presets. We'll select those two and do Control-G to group. I'm going to select this entire set and do Control-G to group. Just like that, they are built and ready for 3D printing. Now, of course, you may want to customize these, so let's do that really quick as well. I am going to use the basic text today, and I'm going to just put Saint, and I'm going to make it a hole, and I'm going to squeeze it down so it's quite small. I'm going to use C to cruise and put it on top of the design. And then I'm going to do control D and I'm going to type pats. Those fit on the design. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to sync those in for printing and I'm going to sync them in an entire millimeter. Shift select the two of them and do control down. Once again, double check that I like the alignment. I'm going to nudge this a little bit to the other side. And I think I'm going to center that. And then I'm also going to duplicate them so that I can use them next for the solids. So if I select them and do control D and I'm going to make them white for later and I'm going to lock them. So that way those two cannot be grouped and the rest of this, if I select it, can be grouped. Notice if I hide these, you can now see the hole where it is going to be. So now I can bring those all back. I'm going to unlock them. I'm going to set them to one millimeter thick. And then because they were cut in before, you can see they are already at the right height. So now we've got a sweet clicky fidget. You can see those parts do not cut through. And the final step is to flip it 180 degrees for printing. Notice if I stay inside the shape, it's 22 and a half degrees. As I rotate, if I hold down shift, it's 45 degrees for every click. Bingo. We are all set for 3D printing. I'm going to select all of these pieces. Notice I'm skipping the white, and I'm going to export those as an STL. I'm going to call this Clover Fidget Base. And hit Save. Then I'm going to hide this one so I can see the other part better. Grab those two and choose export stl notice it was two shapes and it is going to be clover fidget text and save the changes now we can bounce to bamboo lab studio create that brand new project let's choose import and of course we need to visit 3d modeling i'm going to grab both parts at once choose open and i want it to be a single object multiple parts now, the reason I do this is because they come in lined up. 
Now a lot of users will say, hey, why didn't you do that with the OBJ files? I don't like the extra zipped files, so just having my STLs seems a little bit more efficient to me. So I'm going to print this with the standard point to layers. I'm going to switch to object mode because I want to take that text and I want to make it printed with the white. Simply click it out there. Now if we look underneath, you'll see that we've got our text just like we'd expect. And of course I can hit slice plate. Notice it's gonna take about 41 minutes. And then finally, print plate. Double check those colors, which are spot on, and let's send it to the 3D printer. After a moment, of course, it bounces to the device menu screen, and then we can simply wait for it to finish downloading. And once it does, we can click play and monitor the rest from afar. And a little more than 40 minutes later, we have got the parts for our cool fidget. I also love that the way we built it, we only have that much of a prime tower. And of course, once done, just find your switch. These are from Cali. And of course, install is this easy. Find the side with the lip and the lip on your Cali keyboard switch. And when you press it in, you'll hear it snap. Then simply find your cap and press it in. How cool is that? So friends, there you have it. A super fun, clicky fidget. But I also want to remind you that now that you know how to make these walls by exporting as an SVG and then making the outer wall a little bit bigger, you can use this to make boxes, light boxes, anything you want. This is a fantastic technique for that sort of project. Friends, I do want to take a moment to thank my supporters on Patreon. Absolutely love how that group is growing. You can check the bit.ly up above or the link in the description to learn more. Finally, I want to thank you for watching, friends. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or click subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Oh,